Retreat, retreat, retreat is a word commonly heard at the moment, if you're in Hong Kong that is. Thousands of people are taking part in what has now become a week-long protest campaign which has garnered media attention all over the world. A series of what was supposed to be peaceful protests have taken place in Hong Kong's financial district over the past seven days or so. Brute force, including the use of tear gas and pepper spray, has been used by police and government officials attempting to try and control the crowds. Tens of thousands of people have been staging demonstrations, sit-ins and nighttime vigils in what is being called the Umbrella Revolution. And it's really easy to see why. So what are the protests about? Well, democracy in a word. Yes, I know it's not that simple. But in a nutshell, some people in Hong Kong, notably the younger student generation, are protesting for free elections. Elections aren't scheduled to actually take place until 2017, but when they do, officials from China want to limit elections to a handful of candidates who are loyal to the ruling Beijing. The elections are the first ever for Hong Kong's leader and protesters want what they're calling a real democracy, i.e. the ability to have open nominations for candidates and not just those shortlisted by the government. Hong Kong is now a semi-autonomous city and was actually once a former British colony, so these elections, although three years away, are fundamentally important for its people and their long-term goal of universal suffrage. Peaceful marches are commonplace in Hong Kong, so at first people didn't really pay particular attention to the marches when they first began last week. But when police retaliated and with force, things escalated out of control, with people who weren't actually originally involved in the protest joining those on the streets to show their support. These actually included families and pensioners. I don't know. I think it's a so who are behind the protests? Well, when China made its ruling about the elections, Occupy Central, who are a democracy activist organisation, promised demonstrations. But it was actually students in the city who kicked things off. One of them was engineer student Benny Fung. 真的是選擇候選人一定是不會合合香港人的心意 Last Friday, things took a more dramatic turn when thousands stormed Hong Kong's government headquarters. One of the student leaders, Joshua Wong, who's become a bit of a worldwide hit since the protests began, was arrested. He told the crowds, Hong Kong's future belongs to you, you and you. A feeling that seems to be uniting the country and keeping the protests alive. Once this happened, Occupy Central kicked off their campaign. The idea is to instigate a mass disobedience movement. Its leader, Benny Tai, is the organization's frontman and has been addressing the crowds and urging protesters to blockade the heart of Hong Kong's financial district. Whilst the feeling is mostly support for their cause, the disruption to the city is increasingly becoming substantial and tensions are definitely mounting. So what's it like being in the city amidst all this chaos? Well, more than 200 bus routes have been cancelled or diverted. In a city that is dependent on public transport, this has caused mayhem. Tube station exits have been closed or blocked near protest areas. Protesters have even camped out on highways near government headquarters to cause as much problems as possible. And schools in around three districts have even closed. There's been around 100 arrests and around 40 to 50 people have been injured and taken to hospital. This number is likely to grow as protests continue. Originally confined to the main financial district, the protests are now affecting the city's shopping district, bank shops and even some residential areas have been affected. 
we got hold of Lisa Otley, who's a Canadian journalism student living in Hong Kong. Here's what she had to say. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was like the Vancouver riots. Um, I'm from quite near there. So that was really surprising. And uh, it was quite violent and stuff. And it's so different here. Um, what's so unique is the fact that, yes, there's like a defined leader. I mean, like Benny Tai, he is kind of leading the charge with the Occupy Central movement. But um, yesterday and the day before, what you were seeing was is um, outside of Central, like at Admiralty MTR station, going out to Causeway Bay and Mong Kok, which is in the Kowloon side of Hong Kong, um, uh, these like sit down kind of movements, which were blocking off parts of the road, they were popping up and um, there was no like defined leaders for that, but it was so well organized. It um, and like they've been like recycling and picking up litter. It's quite incredible. Myself and another journalism student uh, on Sunday night, we were down near the Admiralty MTR station, and um, yeah, we were in an area and people were not being violent from our perception or how we perceived it. Um, they were just standing around and they got tear gassed and we were in an area that we thought was safe and it seemed peaceful and we in fact got caught in a bit of tear gas so it did seem a bit unprovoked um and uh yeah like now the police are putting out statements saying that they didn't mean to use tear gas and there was a mix-up with the signs um because it did seem a bit overkill people were so kind um like we, our eyes were starting to burn and we weren't wearing masks. We weren't expecting it at all, but people were offering us like tissues and masks. And uh, one girl, she even like offered us water bottles to help wash out our eyes. It escalated very quickly. I mean, a giveaway was obviously that on Sunday night, the police, you know, they were had riot gear and they were wearing gas masks. Um, but it was like a peaceful protest. Hong Kong is renowned for being an orderly and affluent city that prides itself on its civility and freedom. So these demonstrations have shocked most people. So what tactics have been deployed by the police to control the situation? If anything, they've made the situation worse. Hong Kong police have cracked down with unbelievable force. Tear gas hasn't been used in Hong Kong since 2005, and many feel that their actions are against their civil and human rights, and that the authorities are trying to bully them into giving in. Police have been dressed in blue jumpsuits, wearing helmets, and they look quite military. They've even doused protesters with pepper spray. Many again accuse the government of using scare tactics. In response, protesters refusing to back down have been wearing homemade protective masks and goggles to shield themselves from further tear gas and pepper spray attacks. Like many other modern day protests, social media has played its part in Hong Kong. On Monday the 28th of September, Instagram appeared to have been blocked by China and photos shared on Weibo also appeared to have been hidden if they contained certain keywords such as Occupy Central or Hong Kong students. Social media is crucial in helping protesters plan their next campaign and organise their rallies, so these blockades could have been detrimental. This is where FireChat came in. FireChat is a, is a social network messaging app uh, that basically enables you to stay connected when you don't have uh, access to the internet or when you don't have a connection to a cellular data network. And uh, when we launched this application, the primary use we, we were envisioning well, more for large events, concerts, festivals. So, for example, the app was used broadly during the last Burning Man event in the, in the US. Uh, our mission uh, in the company otherwise has always been enable easy access to information, freedom of speech, and improving uh, access to the internet in general. And uh, FireChat happens to be a perfect also tool to uh, show how people can communicate and keep on communicating in situations where normally they wouldn't be able to do so. That's why. Um, most probably uh, what happened in Hong Kong is uh, many of the students and the protesters were aware of what uh, um, I mean, the potential of that uh, technology and what FireChat was doing. And they, they probably just passed the word to say and ask people to download the app to keep on communicating in case internet would be shut down or in case just cellular networks wouldn't work, which happened on Sunday. 
So does everyone agree with the protests? Well, in a word, no. Many worry that the protests, which have already caused disruptions to banks and shops, will have a negative effect on the economy. Hong Kong is a seriously business-minded city, and many workers are reluctant to take part in civil disobedience or anger Beijing. So what's next for Hong Kong? Protesters have called for Hong Kong's chief executive, Mr. Luang, to step down, but he's rejected their demands, saying if that was to happen, the next leader would be chosen by a committee and not the voters. Officials say these illegal protests won't change China's mind. Shanghai 依法 处理. The worry now is that military forces will intervene, more people will be hurt, and China are warning foreign countries not to get involved. Who knows how long the campaign is going to go on for, but for the moment, the protests don't look to be subsiding anytime soon.